So um, I think the next uh, uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Madahu. And um, uh, Dr. Madagu is a consultant pediatric and fetal cardiologist and she's chief of fetal cardiology services in Metera Children's Hospital. And she's going to talk to us about um, uh, right aortic arch, the prenatal detection associations and postnatal uh, outcomes. Dr. Madagu, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank as well the organizing committee for the invitation in this forum. So prenatal detection of right aortic arch associations and postnatal outcomes. In the early embryo, six paired aortic arches are formed to connect the troncus arteriosus of the embryonic heart to the paired dorsal aortas, which fuse to form the descending aorta. Abnormal regression of the primordial paired arches leads to the formation of a right aortic arch, which courses to the right of the trachea in contrast to the normal left aortic arch. The incidence in the general population is unknown, but it has been estimated to be 0.1% in a series of low-risk pregnancies. Since the introduction of the, of the three-vessel trachea view in the routine fetal echocardiography screening, the detection of uh, right aortic arch has been increased. The three-vessel trachea view actually is a transverse view of the fetal upper mediastium, where it depicts the pulmonary artery in continuation with the doctor's arteriosus, the transverse aortic arch, the superior vena cava, and their relationship with the trachea. In the normal fetal heart, the pulmonary artery and the aorta are on the same side to the left of the trachea and forming a V-shape. In the presence of a right aortic arch, as we see here, the aorta crosses to the right of the trachea and forms with the pulmonary artery a U-shape. But why the prenatal diagnosis is so important? It is important because it can be associated with intracardiac abnormalities, extracardiac abnormalities, chromosomal defects, in particular 22Q11 deletion, and can lead to the formation of a vascular ring. Regarding the intracardiac abnormalities, most commonly we see it in conotroncan abnormalities, such as the trilogy of fallow, pulmonary atresia with VSD, common arterial trunk, and less commonly with septal defects such and complex anomalies such as laterality syndromes and hypoplastic left heart syndrome. The extracardiac abnormalities are uh, more common in cases with congenital heart disease, up to 30%, and less common in cases with just an isolated right aortic arch. Most of the extracardiac anomalies can be detected antenatally, but there are few of them, like a gastrointestinal obstruction, that can be diagnosed postnatally or later in pregnancy, which means that a detailed extracardiac evaluation is always needed and routine continuous follow-up during pregnancy. The chromosomal abnormalities in the presence of the right aortic arch are more frequent in cases with structural congenital heart diseases, up to 46%. In the presence of the right aortic arch with extracardiac anomalies, the risk of chromosomal anomalies is 7.5%, and in particular, the risk for the George syndrome is 4.3%. If we have just an isolated right aortic arch without any extracardiac anomaly and without any congenital heart disease, the risk is lower, 4.7%, and the risk for the George is 2.4%. All these rates are even lower in the presence of a normal first and second trimester scan. Regarding the right aortic arch and the vascular ring, the vascular ring is an heterogeneous group of vascular abnormalities encircling the trachea and the esophagus. Most of the cases are asymptomatic, but there are patients that can be present with symptoms of compression like dysphagia, stridor, wheeze, 
at a median age about of seven months, and this patient will require surgery for division of the vascular rings at a median age of 15 months. The most common type of right arch that can cause a vascular ring is the right arch with an aberrant origin of the left subclavian artery. In this case, the left subclavian artery arises as the last branch from the aortic arch in a quite posterior position, courses behind the, the esophagus to the left hand. A left arterial duct originates from a bulbous dilatation at the base of the left subclavian artery, the diverticulum of Comerel, and attaches to the proximal left pulmonary artery. In that way, the duct pulls forward the aorta and the diverticulum of Comerel, causing dilatation, causing compression of the esophagus and the trachea. In this case, you can see a patient, and this is a CT angiography for it, from a patient with an aberrant left subclavian artery, and from the posterior view, you can see very nicely the diverticulum of Comerel, which in this patient was causing um, compression of the esophagus. Another form of a vascular ring is the right aortic arch with mirror imaging branching and a left duct. Usually, in the presence of a right arch with the mirror imaging branching, the ductus arteriosus connects um, the innominate artery to the left, uh, to, to the pulmonary artery, and in this case, we don't have um, the formation of a ring. But if the duct originates posteriorly from the descending aorta, passes leftwards to the left pulmonary artery, then uh, we have the formation of a vascular ring. In the double aortic arch, both uh, the arches, the left and the right, persist, arising from the ascending aorta, passing uh, um, uh, to the, uh, next to the trachea and esophagus, and join together posteriorly to form the descending aorta. Occasionally, there are cases where a part of uh, a double aortic arch, and usually the left part, is atretic with a fibrous cord distal to the left subclavian artery. It's very important to mention that no imaging modality except direct visualization can show the ligamentous or atretic structures. And here again, you can see a patient with a partial double aortic arch with an atretic left aortic arch that was causing mild compression of the trachea. At this point, I would like to mention a very interesting paper from the team uh, of uh, Evelina and Kicks College Hospital regarding the clinical implications of an isol uh, isolated right aortic arch. And I would like to emphasize the association of the right aortic arch with tracheal compression. In this study, they followed up by approximately 100 patients uh, with uh, right aortic arch and left arterial duct, and 25 of them, percent of them, were symptomatic. Bronchoscopy had almost all the symptomatic patients, but few of them of the asymptomatic as well. The interesting thing is that significant tracheal compression uh, was observed as well in the asymptomatic patients, almost in two-thirds of the asymptomatic patients, and they, this patient needed surgery uh, for the division of vascular ring. From the same group, another study that shows the percentage of significant tracheal compression even in the asymptomatic patients. So interestingly, uh, there is significant tracheal compression even in asymptomatic patients. And here raises the question, do all these patients, the asymptomatic patients with the prenatal diagnosis of right arch need, need to be reviewed postnatally by an airway specialist and need to undergo bronco bronchoscopy? And is early surgery needed to this patient in order to optimize growth of the tracheal cartilage and to avoid tracheomalacia. Reaching towards the end of the talk, I would like you uh, to show you an algorithm proposed 
uh, for the management of right aortic arch. So once the diagnosis is made, detailed fetal echocardiography and assessment of extracardiac structure is needed. If there is a cardiac abnormality, then there is a high risk of chromosomal defect. So uh, uh, we need to offer a karyotype. If the intracardiac anomaly is normal, then we look for extracardiac abnormalities. If there are no extracardiac abnormalities, we continue the routine follow-up and we assess the newborn after delivery. Usually, they propose to follow up at 6 to 12 months interval for at least two years. So, how do we cancel the patients when we diagnose an isolated right aortic arch? It can be a variation of normal. 75% of cases remain asymptomatic, not requiring surgery for vascular ring. 10% of the cases will have chromosomal abnormalities in association with extracardiac abnormalities. And 5% of the cases will have chromosomal abnormalities without any extracardiac abnormalities. The newborn needs routine examination by the pediatricians after delivery. If there is stridor or difficulty in swallowing, then we need to proceed with further management and further investigation, such as CT, MRI, or bronchoscopy. Otherwise, routine referral to pediatric cardiology outpatient clinic. In conclusion, there is increasing picking up to the diagnosis of right aortic arts due to increasing awareness. And because previously we were diagnosing only the cases in a symptomatic postnatal population, it remains a gray area as to follow up and management in well populations. So further, further research is needed. Thank you very much. This was an excellent uh, presentation by Dr. Bata. Thank you. Uh, uh, I enjoyed a lot. Thank you very much uh, for this presentation. I just wanted to make a small comment that uh, it is a little bit terrifying for the fetal medicine doctor, this 5% that you mentioned, that there is a right aortic arch with chromosomal abnormalities, but with no extra cardiac features. So in other words, if we as, a fetal, as fetal medicine doctors, if we miss a right aortic arts, then in these cases there is increased, a very increased risk of uh, chromosomal abnormalities. Thank you very much uh, for Thank your presentation you. again. Thank you very much. And, uh, it, will be, it will be a pleasure to present uh, the next speaker.